Hey, this is Ben Solomon and welcome to this episode of the Techno Leadership Show. In this episode, we're going to be covering something that I keep seeing as a question that's being asked in forums, in Reddit and other places, which is a sense of feeling lost and feeling scared as a new technology, which is IT or computer science or engineering graduate. And looking back, I can associate with that feeling from close to 20 years ago when I was in a similar situation. It is scary because yes, you've got all this theoretical knowledge as a graduate going through university doing a bachelor's degree or master's degree or whatever it might be. But you also understand in a practical sense that experience is more important than all the theoretical stuff that you've learned, your graduation and your uh, piece of paper that gives you a degree. Yes, it helps you with how to think, how to troubleshoot, all of those sort of thought process, how to be disciplined in moving forward. But what it doesn't give you is real world feel of what it's like in a workplace. You could be doing everything required for that specific role. Like let's say you're going into IT. In all honesty, I've said that in previous episodes, I am an electronics engineer who found my way into IT, one, because of interest in technology, two, because in my final year of electronics engineering, I had communication engineering subjects where I felt that I could go into networks and telecoms, and that kind of led me along the path of doing MCSE and a CCNA, and because I was working in an organization and the owner of the organization was also a trainer in those areas and he suggested I go down that path. And that's kind of led me down this way. But did my degree play a part in getting jobs? Not really. I had jobs before I finished my degree. I had jobs before I finished any certification. I just apply for them. I had the skills, yes, because I tinkered with computers. So I tested things in my own environments. I built test environments to play around and work with, which was a lot harder back almost 20 years ago than it's today. Today, the computer that I'm doing this recording on has 32 gigs of RAM, it's a desktop computer, 32 gigs of RAM, I can, um, in Windows 10, I can create Hyper-V instances, build a whole environment within there. And I've been doing that since Hyper-V became embedded into the operating system. And before that, and not in the initial stages, but after, I'd been buying X-Lease equipment and using building my own little labs to test things, to learn, to grow, to try things that I can't really try in my workplace. So the thing to do is to get yourself some semblance of real world expertise. And when you start working with these things, you build a sense of confidence that you can do the job. And once you have confidence that you can do the job, it's easier to present yourself as a person who is capable. You're not the kind of person who knows everything. No one does, even I don't, even after being in the industry for 20 something years. And I know people who've been in the industry 30 plus years and they uh, they happily and honestly go, look, I don't know everything about everything. I know my area really well and they've grown. Me being more of a generalist, has good enough understanding of a lot of areas, but I'm no match to a specialist. I am no match to a specialist in any of those areas. I understand it enough to be able to do the job, especially now that I've moved away from core technical work. I have enough understanding to be able to do the job still because I worked in technical roles and came up. 
But at the same time, it helps me when I'm managing people who are technically inclined. So we, depending on your strengths, if you're more a specialist style person, focus. If you're more a generalist kind of person, learn, go deep for certain periods of time in certain areas. Like go deep in networking for six months. Go deep into um, Windows Server for six months. Go deep into System Center for six months. Whatever it might be, like find those uh, places where you can really build deep knowledge and then you're not going to lose your knowledge. You just have to keep up with some of the new advancements, but you can then go into the next silo and build knowledge and skills there. So depending on which course you've done, whether it's IT, whether it's computer science, and whether it's other engineering, things like mechanical, civil, whatever it might be. There are multiple opportunities in today's day, in 2021 and beyond. It's a lot easier than when I did this. There's freelancing opportunities. Yes, you get paid rubbish to do freelance work. I'm not denying that, especially when you're doing it on platforms like Upwork or Freelancer.com or whatever it might be, a guru.com. The pay you're competing against people in, you know, uh, countries like India and Philippines and China and all that sort of thing. So you and Eastern Europe, where a little bit of you, uh, you know, like a US dollar is probably um, a lot more for them there. So you're competing against them in that sort of sense. But what it does allow you is the opportunity one to build your own confidence, and two to get real world experience in whatever area you're wanting to go into so even while you're at university graduating you have the opportunity to be doing projects like this on the weekends in the evenings a couple hours a day whatever it might be to build up your reservoir of skills it doesn't matter which area it is Yes, for things like mechanical engineering and automotive engineering and things like that, you'll have to probably find a um, mechanic nearby or someone who allows you to work with them or at least observe them on a weekend or an evening so that you can build some skills. Some sort of part-time work, even if it's low wage, you're building skills in the industry and that gives you the confidence and that confidence then helps you to position yourself as someone who knows what they're talking about. When you come out of uh, doing a degree, you theoretically know stuff, but you don't have real world experience. You've done things in the laboratory. It's different to what you're doing in the real world. Yes, it does give you some fundamentals and foundations, but the real world is the real world. That's where you judge based on your results. But being able to do some sort of part-time work, Freelance work, even if it's not paying as well, helps you build a portfolio of sorts, build skills, and build confidence in your ability to actually function in the real world and create real results. And then you can use all of this that you have done there in your job application, saying, hey, while I was doing university or while I was having this break after university, I finished graduating and all that sort of thing, I was working in this organization or I was doing freelance work, taking gigs to build applications if you're in um, computer science and development applications, if you were in um, infrastructure and systems, doing small gigs to set up small networks and things like that, whatever it is. Pick these things up, do whatever you can. Don't be afraid of building those skills, building real world experience and getting the portfolio you need that will help you get the job that you're wanting to get to. This, the fear and the feeling lost actually comes from the fact that you don't have confidence that whatever you've studied you can do in the real world. And the only way to bridge that gap 
is either working in the real world or building simulation environments like if you're in IT in the infrastructure side of things building simulation networks simulation and building your own little environment on Hyper-V at home whatever it might be gaining confidence knowing that you can't you won't intentionally break things in the workplace and showing the fact that you are actually doing things like this improves your chances of getting the job when you apply for it when i've recruited staff for junior level roles if i see that they've shown such initiative they've done projects freelance they've done projects at home that have gone above and beyond outside of their university or coursework they get a better chance of being interviewed you're setting yourself apart saying I actually want and I know and I am building my own experience and expertise going above and beyond what is normal to be able to then bring that value and contribute in the company that you're coming into so if you're feeling lost if you're feeling scared as a new grad in whatever industry it is especially engineering and tech is what we're talking about here it is because you don't have confidence and you don't know you think you can but you don't know that you can because you haven't done it in the real world so getting some experience in the real world by either freelancing uh, interning with someone some company for free or cheap gives you that opportunity to test what you know in the real world and convert that into actual experience and that experience gives you confidence and that confidence then gets rid of that feeling of being lost and being scared because now you know what you're capable of hopefully that's helped you out hopefully that's given you some thing to think about outside of where you're thinking at the moment to get yourself some experience to get to validate the fact that you are capable of getting the results that are needed in the job that you'd be applying for and then utilize that as a foundation for you to be able to apply to the roles that you're looking to apply for i wish you all the best in your journey as a tech professional manager and leader if you like this episode please hit the like button and if you haven't subscribed yet please hit the subscribe button so that you're notified of future episodes I uh, look forward to talking to you in a future episode. Have a fantastic day. Take care.